Okay, we're looking at tongue rolling this time, and in the first part of the problem here, they are not really clear about whether tongue rolling is dominant or recessive. There's a hint here that they put the tongue rolling on the left and non-tongue rolling on the right, which is usually they say dominant thing first and then recessive thing, but finally down here, they talk about the non-tongue roller recessive allele, which makes it pretty definite. So, big T represents that you can roll your tongue, and little t means you can't. And this is going to follow the Hardy-Weinberg equation, we assume, so here it is in case you've forgotten. And the secondary piece of it is that p plus q have to add up to 1. We're likely to need that in a minute. And they tell us 64% of people can roll their tongue kind of don't care because that 64% is a combination of these two terms and I don't know how it divvies up. So we blow past this and go to the non-tongue rollers because we love them. We know they're little t, little t. They're the, dom the double recessive group and they make up 36% of people. So if we math this a little bit, if q squared is 0 0.36. We can square root both sides of that to strip the square off, and we'll find that q is the square root of 0 0.36 is 0 0.6. So that's how often we get the recessive allele. So actually 60% of the chromosomes in this population have the little t trait that can't roll their tongue. The only reason tongue rolling is winning over here and is more common is because it's a dominant trait. So the heterozygous people, big T, little t, all can roll their tongues, but allele-wise, the non-tongue roller trait is more common. P is 1 minus Q is 0 0.4. Right? We know that these two numbers have to add up to 1, so if we're starting with 1, this group takes care of 0 0.6 of it. You can do 1 minus 0 0.6, and that tells you that P has to be 0.4. Now that we have that, this is a good time usually to see what the questions are. What is the frequency of the non-tongue roller recessive allele? Well, the frequency of the recessive allele is q. It's 0 0.6. So the frequency of the non-roller allele is 0 0.6. And so the roller allele, that's p is 0 0.4. Remember for both of these we're looking at alleles, so we're down at the P and Q level. This is the level where we're looking at two alleles at once, so we're looking at an entire person. This is if we're just looking at chromosomes, or alleles if you like. So we got those, they're the one decimal place, fine. What percentage of this population would be heterozygous for the tongue rolling trait? Heterozygous means one of each, that's the 2PQ group. 2PQ is 2 times 0.4 times 0 0.6. 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 is 0 0.24. Double that, you get 0 0.48. Or 48%. What is the homozygous frequency for tongue rollers in this population? The tongue rolling trait is the dominant one, so double dominant is the p-squared group. p-squared is how often you get people who have big T, big T. They're talking about tongue rollers, as in people who can roll their tongue, so we're, that means we're up at this level, we're not looking at alleles anymore. p-squared is 0 0.4 squared, which is 0 0.16 or 16%. And then they pop out how many people would this represent in the study. Well, how many people were in the study? 830, oh, I was going to add these together and that would have gotten me 1300, but they just hand us that number, so no need to do the arithmetic. There's a total of 1300 people in the study, and I think the easiest way to set this up is to say we have the 16%. That means there's 16 homozygous dominant people out of every 100. And the question is, 
how many homozygous dominant people does that mean out of every 1300? Right? These numbers are totals, and the numbers up top are the small subgroup of them who can, who are big T, big T. They can roll their tongue and all their kids will too. So to solve this mathematically, you do 16 times 1300 divided by 100, which looks to be 208. So out of these tongue rollers up here, the 832, 208 of them are big T, big T, and all the rest, which I guess would be 624, would be heterozygous, meaning they can roll their tongue, but they aren't full dominant. They're one dominant, one recessive. Okay, and last thing. What percentage of this population is homozygous for non-tongue rollers? We can do this without any math. Do you see why? Homozygous non-tongue rollers, well, the only way to be a non-tongue roller is to be little t, little t. So there's only one group that doesn't roll their tongue, and they gave, they gave us that already. It's this group, 36%. You could put 36% given, or if you really want to do the number crunch, the double recessive people are Q squared, which means they are 0 0.6 squared, which comes out to 0 0.36 or 36%.